Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 4.07, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you guys how you can spectrally process your sounds using a built-in container device within Bitwig Studio. So I've held this one off until the end because I want you guys to realize that it's so easy to set these things up manually if you want to. And when you do set things up manually, you often have more control. Now in Bitwig, they, it, it comes bundled with something called the multiband FX2. And this is really cool. You have a crossover frequency here that sets the low and the high. So it's like the same thing as having an FX layer and having you know an EQ2. And in this case, you know, we'll say low pass and we'll take it down to, let's just go around 1K. And then our other layer, we could set up a high pass and go to 1K. So in this example, 1K is our split or our crossover frequency. And you set this here in the center and then you can add effects either to the high or to the low. So you just click in here and then you add effects. So right now, if I play this back, if I adjust this split, it's not gonna sound like anything, right? But now what I can do is I can go into the high and I could add the reverb in here. And I could go into the low and add a distortion. Maybe just use a preset for fun. Okay, so what are a few issues I have with the multiband effects too? A couple of the issues are I can't control my level really. I can obviously if I go in here and I put a tool device, but I'm not really getting great metering coming out of this. So if it was up to me, I'd probably prefer to be working like how I've shown you guys. Also, we only have two frequencies we can work with. And this is really because in most situations, in most cases, with popular electronic music especially, people only need two frequencies because they want to control the low end and then they want everything else above it. So people will use something like this, um, add a distortion, add a compressor to the low end, and then at the end, they can even go in here with the tool and they can drop this down to mono in case there's some stereo differences and they're scared about playing it back on a mono system and having phase cancellation or not being able to hear any bass at all. So I can see why they made something like a multiband effects too, but for me and for what I'm usually gonna be doing when I'm working with spectral processing, I wouldn't use it. But at the same time, it's very cool, it's very quick, and it's very like, transparent about where that frequency split is. I'm not 100% sure how this thing works, but based on just my own experiments with it, it sounds very transparent. It sounds cleaner than if I'm actually in there dropping filters. And obviously that's because they can code it to make it sound super, super clean. Sometimes that's what you're gonna want. Sometimes it isn't. So that's the multi-band FX2 container, but I hope after seeing the other ways we can work with spectral and multi-band processing, uh, you can understand that really if you wanna set it up manually, it's just as easy, it's just as quick. And after you do set something like that up, you can always go in and save it. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. And in the next video, we are going to quickly walk through how you can set up your own multi-band dynamics plugin effect. Thank you so much for watching, and you'll hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.